name's Jeff. Today I'm going to talk about the FAA's advisory circular. We'll go over what it is, why we have the advisory circular, the basic uses. We'll talk a little bit about the numbering system and how we can understand what each advisory circular covers in general by looking at its numbering system. We'll go over an example to solidify what we've learned and then we'll conduct a review and a conclusion. I got most of my information from the Pilot's Handbook of Aeronautical Knowledge and the FAA's website. This book can be found on the FAA's website and advisory circular information can as well and we'll go over that in a minute. So let's get started. The advisory circular system, what is it? Well, it's a systematic means of providing pilots with non-regulatory information of interest to the pilots. It provides guidance and information about methods to comply with FARs that are appropriate for the FAA. This advisory circular system provides a single uniform agency-wide system that the FAA uses to deliver information to customers, to industry, to pilots, and to the general public, the aviation community as a whole. Well, knowing that it's this system of information by which the FAA can share information with the aviation and general public, the next question that might logically be asked is, well, why? Why would we have them? What kind of information would we share? Specifically, advisory circulars cover four main areas, or they're used for four main reasons. One is to clarify regulations. So if anyone here has read uh, part of the CFR 14, you know it's not necessarily written to be read and clear step by step. It's a legal document. But sometimes we need a little more clarification. When you're reading a part of the FAR, you might find yourself referred to this section or that section, another part, and this can get confusing. So the advisory circulars offer a way to clarify those regulations. They also offer a way for the FAA and members of industry to properly follow the organizations and uh, correction and the regulations and to implement those regulations in a way that both are clear on the, uh, on the method. Another reason we have advisory circulars is when requested by a government entity for clarification purposes. So if the FAA is writing parts, such as Part 141 to regulate FAA schools, or FAA regulated schools, or Part 61 for pilot certifications, Part 91 for flight rules, the NTSB might want some further clarification or a more easily read document that can help that government entity do its job. So it might request that the FAA publish an advisory circular on a topic, such as uh, those mentioned. There's also advisory circulars that cover FAA grant programs, such as airport improvement and, and such. And then finally, the FAA will publish advisory circulars to promote aviation safety, in general information about weather, about hazards, about anything that will promote aviation safety for the general community. So now that we understand what an advisory circular is and why an advisory circular might be published, we really need to understand how to look one up if we're looking for a particular topic. Well, the advisory circular system has a specific naming convention that will help us understand basically what's covered and how current the information is. So in this example I've put on the board, we've got AC for advisory circular and that's the start of all advisory circulars. Then the next number, in this case 61, represents the part of the FAR that it applies to. So part 61 is certification of pilots and instructors. The next number in the series, starting after the dash, represents the sequential number of advisory circular that has been issued for this part. So this would be the 65th advisory circular related to part 61. Finally, at the end, we may or may not have a letter. If we have a letter, it represents the sequence of additions for that advisory circular. In this case, advisory circular that refers to part 61 certification of pilots and instructors, which just represents the 65th 
publication for part 61. And this is the fifth edition of this particular advisory circular. So let's take a look at this example. This is the FAA's webpage, FAA.gov. And if we move down to the bar across the top and select regulations and policies, we'll see advisory circulars at the top left. Here we can see that the advisory circulars are listed in order by topic or far part. We can search there or we can type a search in the search window and then select whether or not we'd like to see only current advisory circulars or all. As we look down further, we can see there are advisory circulars pertaining to aircraft, to airmen, to air traffic and general operating rules, for instance, where we find part 91. Here's information about external loads, part 141 flight schools, and so on. Let's take a look at Part 61 and try to find 6165 Echo. As you can see, here we are inside Part 61's advisory circulars looking at the current. There are 17 results and we can scroll down and find 6165 Echo here. If we take a look, we can see when this was published and get a general idea of what is inside this advisory circular. You can select the advisory circular link and it will bring us to a bit more information. So we see we're looking at advisory circular 6165 published in November of 2005 and here's the description again. Also we can see that there was a version that was canceled and that was the last version, the Delta. When we select the advisory circular PDF, we can then begin to read our advisory circular. It's just that simple. Okay, so today we've gone over an example of an FAA advisory circular and how we can find the advisory circulars on the FAA webpage. We've gone over the naming convention for the advisory circular the first portion pertaining to the part of the FAR, the second portion being a sequential number of advisory circulars for that part, and the letter being the number of editions of that particular advisory circular. We've talked about the four main reasons why the FAA publishes advisory circulars. Regulations, government entities, grant programs, and aviation safety. We went into a little bit of detail on those regulations. And finally, we talked about what the advisory circular is. Bottom line, it's a way for the FAA to clarify information, make it easier to read, and get it out to the aviation community and the public and government entities so that they can all operate efficiently. Hope you enjoyed the class, and see you next time.